Hi everyone! I think it's time we had a great detailed discussion about chords. So first of all, what is a chord? A chord is formed when, when two or more notes are played at the same time. But you might ask, why do we need chords? Well, take a look at this. sound so boring and plain? I think we need to add in some chords to make this more interesting, like this. Doesn't that sound much better? So let's look into the types of chords. So the most simple type of chord is a triad. A triad, as you see in the name, it's a three note chord because tri means three. So if you wanna look at a simple major triad, you have uh, the C triad. So you have the tonic, the third, and the fifth. And you could also look at this chord by uh, seeing the scale degrees. So the tonic would be scale, scale degree number one, because it's the first note of the scale. The third would be scale degree number three, or E. And the fifth would be G, so it's the fifth note. If you're having trouble with scale degrees, just play the C major scale, and you'll find that C is the first note or first scale degree, D is the second scale degree, E is the third scale degree, and so forth. Well, everybody knows jump, and that uses major triads. So that uses major triads because in the first section where it goes if you just make them chords instead of arpeggios it would go like this so you have the g major triad and after that you have the c major triad and it's in second inversion if you watch my chord inversions video you can get more information on that and then it goes back to the um G major triad, and then the F major triad, and then it goes into a bunch of other major triads. So that's a great example of where major triads are used. But that's not the only type of triad. Let's look into minor triads. So in a minor triad, you have the tonic, the minor third, and the fifth. So you still have scale degrees. You have the one for the tonic, and then for the minor third, you have the flat three. So instead of playing the third scale degree, you'd, you'd make it flat or go down a half step. So that would be the minor third. So C, E flat, and then the fifth would be G. So I can give you an example of um, a song that uses minor triads. The Doctor Who theme song uses many minor triads. But the most common one, the one that was used the most, was the E minor triad. So it had the root, minor third, and fifth. So the next type of triad, it's a really cool, really weird triad. It's called the augmented triad. And as you might know, augmented means increased. So it's more stretched out than the major or minor triads because it consists of two major thirds, one between the root and the third, and the other between the root and the sharp fifth. So the scale of degrees would be one, three, and sharp five. So you would end up with a chord like this, or this, or that, or 
many more. So there is an example of a classical song that uses augmented chords. It's um, Edward Grieg's Morning. You must know that one. So as you can see, it went from the E major triad to the E augmented triad because the fifth just went up a half step. That would be the difference between a major triad and an augmented triad. The next type of triad, it's the opposite of augmented. It's diminished and diminished means decreased. So it's even more tightly packed than the minor chord. So instead of having the root, minor third, and fifth, it would have the root, the minor third, and the flat fifth. So you just take the fifth and go down a half step to make it flat. So all of those would be examples of diminished chords. As you can see in all of these chords, I didn't say major fifth for a sharp five or minor fifth for a flat five. And this is because in both the major and minor scales of one key, the fifth is the same. So if you take D major, the fifth is A, it's the fifth note of the scale. If you play the D major scale, A remains natural. And if you play the minor scale, A is still the same. So the fifth is actually a perfect interval. So if there's an accidental, it would be flat fifth or sharp fifth. It wouldn't be minor fifth or major fifth. For more information about intervals, please look at my video in the link below. Now let's make this a little bit more complicated. Other than the four basic triads, you also have the suspended triad. So this is when you have the scale degrees one, four, five. So you take the first, fourth, and fifth notes of the scale. So if you wanna make a B suspended chord, you would take B as the root, then the fourth, which is E, and the fifth, which, which is F sharp. So that would be a one, four, five suspended chord. And when you have these degrees included in a suspended chord, you would call this a sus four. So S-U-S four. That's how you would notate it. So this is a B, B sus four chord. This is a C sus four chord and so on. But there's also a different kind of suspended chord that's not used as often as the sus four. It's the sus two. So this would mean that the scale degrees are one, two, and five. So you'd have that kind of a sound. Or if you take an E flat sus two, you'd have that kind of a sound. And you can always invert the sus two chords to make sus four chords. If you look at my inversion videos, you'll know that um, if you invert this chord, you could eventually end up at a sus4 chord. So you take the root up an octave each time. And now after inverting it twice, you now have a B sus4 chord. So that's very interesting. Also another interesting fact about suspended chords is that they're neither major nor minor. So if you have a C sus4, you don't know whether it's gonna resolve to C major or if it's going to resolve to C minor. So that makes it suspended, so you don't really know whether it's straight up major or straight up minor. So another type of suspended chord, other than the sus2 and sus4, it's called the Lydian suspended chord, and you'll be familiar with Lydian and all the other major modes if you look at my video on them. So just to recap of Lydian, the Lydian scale has a sharp four in it, but other than that, it's just like the major scale. So a C Lydian would go like this. 
So if you want to have a Lydian suspended chord, you, you would have a one, four, five, but the four is sharp in this case, so it becomes one sharp four, five. So a D Lydian suspended chord would be D, and then the sharp four, which is D sharp, and then A, and so forth. It kind of has that dissonance or creepiness, however you want to use it in your own improvisation. Now, let's move on to something jazzy. I love jazz. So, these jazzy chords come when you have four note chords where the seventh is included. So you have a triad, but you have some kind of a seventh scale degree stacked on top. So here are a few examples. The first example would of course be the major seventh. You could remember this by just playing any major triad so you could have an E major triad. And then you add the major seventh onto the top of the chord. So you have the scale degrees one, three, five, seven. So the E is the first one. The G sharp is the third one because if you play the E major scale, G sharp is the third note. So it'd be the third scale degree. And then B is the fifth scale, scale degree. And then D sharp is the seventh scale degree. So it's kind of the jazzy way of introducing happy emotions. Next, let's learn about the minor seventh. So if you have a B minor seventh, you you'd have the one, flat three, five, and then the flat seventh. So if you play the B minor scale, so it's the minor seventh, because when you play the minor scale, it's the seventh note. So that would be added to the simple B minor triad. So that would be what a minor seventh chord sounds like. So you could have many minor seventh chords could have C minor 7, D minor 7, E flat minor 7, and you could also invert them, that would be A minor 7, and I have a song example that includes this A minor 7 and many more minor 7th chords. jazzy triads along with a bass line. So let me explain it to you a little bit. So the first chord of that song, that doesn't look like an A minor seven, but it actually is because the, the root position of an A minor seven would be A, C, E, G. And then you can invert it. So bring the A up an octave and then you have C, E, G, A and then invert it one more time, and then you get E, G, A, C. So that's the first chord of the song. The second chord moves to the D minor seven, and it's in its root position. So you have the root, minor third, fifth, and minor seventh. And then those are the two minor chords that are used most often in that song. Of course, there are some other chords like that and then the major chord and we'll get to those in a second so next after the minor seventh is something more dissonant than the minor seventh it's the half diminished seventh so that sounds really fancy but it's actually pretty simple so you have the diminished triad so if you have the c diminished triad it's c e flat and g flat and then after that, you just add the flat seven on. So as we learned from the minor seven, the flat seven is B flat. So you'd have the diminished triad, then you would have the B flat added to the end. And that would be your C half diminished chord. 
it's much more tense than the minor chord, and it's used a lot in jazz. So another chord that's really similar to this is the diminished seventh. So you still have your diminished triad, and then you have something really interesting. It's the double flat seventh. Let me break it down for you. So the double flat just means that from the seventh, so if you take the seventh of a C scale, that would be B. So if you take the double flat into account, then you'd go down to half steps. So B flat and A. So this would be your diminished chord. So you, ma you might be thinking, instead of writing C, E flat, G flat, and B double flat, can't I just write C, E flat, G flat, A? Well, actually, some musicians would consider that incorrect because if you take a normal chord with one, three, five, and seven, you have C, E, G, B as the major seventh, but then everything else just adds accidentals to the notes that are already there. Like for the minor seventh, you still have C, E, G, B, but the E is flat and the B is also flat. So note that for the minor seventh, you don't write C, D sharp, G, A sharp. You have to stick with C, E, G, B, and then just attach the accidentals onto that. So for the diminished seventh, it wouldn't be C, E flat, G flat, A, it would be C, E flat, G flat, B double flat. So now that we've gotten that straight, let's move on to a less tense chord. This is the dominant chord, and I think it's one of the most popular chords used in jazz. So that would be an inverted dominant chord, but it would be the, the one. So in G major, this would be the root, the third, the fifth, and the flat seventh. So in the major scale, this would be the seventh, but you go down a half step since it's a flat. So that'd be a dominant chord. And you can always invert it. So a dominant chord, it feels like it's gonna resolve to the four. So it, the G dominant chord, it feels like it's gonna resolve to C. You could find dominant chords in a chord progression like this. As you can see, it covers three of the chords that we talked about, the D minor seven, and then this is the D, the, sorry, G dominant. It's just inverted, so instead of this, it's just D, F, G, B, an octave lower, of course. And then the C major seventh. So that would be a chord progression that includes the major seventh, the minor seventh, and the dominant seventh. After this comes a mix of the major and minor seventh chords. It's just called the major minor seventh. So it has the one, the flat three, so in the C, the key of C, it would be one, flat three, five, and seven. So it's C, E flat, G, B. As you can see, it has the minor triad, but you attach the major seventh to it. So instead of being this or this, it's a mix of both. I feel like this is the creepiest chord out of all the seven chords. What do you think? The next chord, it's a mix of two of the things we have learned. It's the suspended dominant. So that would be the one, four, five, and flat seven. So it's basically just a sus four chord and then you add the flat seventh on top. So that would be a C suspended dominant, but you could have a D suspended dominant or an F suspended dominant. 
And just like the suspended triad, it gives a feeling of staying in between major and minor. So it's not that, or it's not that. It's just, sorry, it's like that. So you don't know whether it's going to major or minor, just like the triad. The next chord, I think it's the most complex out of all of them. It's the altered chord. So this chord, it doesn't really specify what kind of chord you play. It could have many different combinations of altered fifths and ninths. So the ninth interval, it's the same as just the second interval. So we can think of it as fifths and seconds, if that makes it easier. So it could have a combination of flat, the flat fifth and the flat second, the flat fifth and the sharp second, the sharp fifth and the flat second, or the sharp fifth and the sharp second. And it sounds really confusing, but it just gives you a lot of freedom in what kind of a chord you choose to play. So here's a really weird example of an altered chord. So that's just called a B7 altered. So you have the the notes of a B, B7 chord or B dominant chord, but then you alter it so you get, you get a more widespread chord with different accidentals. So in this case, it's the B, F, A, C, D sharp, G, B, D. And this chord, it gives you all the possible voicings that are included in an altered chord. So you just notate this chord with A-L-T. The next set of chords that we'll learn about, they may seem really crowded, but just as long as you know your intervals and your accidentals, you can ace these chords. So let's take an example of a really crowded chord. So the notation would look like this, G7, sharp nine, sharp 11. So that seems really wonky, but you just have to go step by step. So first let's play a G7 chord. So a G7 chord is the same as a G dominant chord. So you would play the root, third, fifth, and flat seventh. So it's telling you to play a G7. And then it's telling you that the ninth, so that would be, the ninth of G major would be the A. So it's telling you to make the A sharp. And then the eleventh of G major would be the C. So you have to make the C sharp too, because it says sharp 11. So you have the G7. And then you add on the sharp nine and the sharp 11. You can, transfer the notes around to make it more manageable to play. So you could take the A sharp and the C sharp and just translate it down an octave. So you'd have... It may seem really crowded and dissonant, but these kind of chords are used a lot in jazz during really tense parts of the music. Another chord like this could be the E flat major seven sharp five. So just start off with the E flat major seven. The E flat major triad with the seventh added on top. And within the chord, it's telling you to make the, fa the fifth sc scale degree is telling you to make that sharp. So just go a half step up. So instead of E flat G, B flat D, it would be E flat G, B, D. In my opinion, it kind of sounds like the major minor seventh. <laughs> 
The last one that we're gonna look at today is the D minor seventh flat five. And as we looked at earlier, it's the same thing as the half diminished seventh. So for a D half diminished seventh, you just have to play the one, flat three, flat five, and flat seven. So as long as you go step by step, you can decode these really big chords. Wasn't that a lot of chords? Well, in my opinion, the altered chord at first was a little challenging for me. But then when I practiced a lot, it got easy peasy. It's good that you just memorize all of these chords so that when you're going for a certain feel of music, you know exactly which chord to play at that time. Using these chords, you can make great songs. Feel free to comment and ask any questions. Please like my video and subscribe to my channel. See you next time.